We've taken a look at already at the development of the colonies here in the Americas, the Southern, the New England, and the Middle Colonies. And so now we're going to focus on the development of these colonies now as American colonies. And we see how they begin to develop ideas and a culture of their own that makes them very different than the culture and the customs that they were accustomed to back in England. And we also begin to see some changes happening in England, which are going to affect the way that things are run and managed in the colonies as well. So we're going to begin with the Navigation Acts of the 1600s. And these are a series of acts, right, of laws that were passed in England regarding the colonies and how they were able to trade. And England, for the most part, because they had these colonies, they wanted to make the biggest profit for them. Right, that was the idea behind mercantilism. We talked a little bit about it back in chapter two with the age of exploration. Most countries practice mercantilism in which they made money through trade. And England wanted to make the most money they could from the colonies. So they restricted the way that the colonies could trade to make their biggest profit. So it was illegal for colonies to sell to other countries other than England. Uh, they also forced colonies to be able to use English ships only um, they could only go through English ports when they were sailing and trading. So it really limited the way that the colonists were able to trade their goods and have any kind of free trade. Because of that, many colonists resorted, resorted to smuggling different goods in and out of um, the country. Now, when James II becomes king of England... Um, he feels that the colonies are too independent, right? They've been able to do too much of what they want without really having to be um, managed or enforced by Britain. So he goes ahead and unites all of the northern colonies under one government, which was known as the Dominion of New England. And this new Dominion of New England was run by the governor, Sir Edmund Andros, who was a royal governor, so he was appointed by the king to run over, to rule over the Dominion. And of course, this the colonists did not like very much at all. They didn't like Andros because he limited the power of the town meeting, and those New England colonies were very much accustomed to the town meeting. That's how they ruled. That's how they governed themselves, and they were used to self-government, and now they were being restricted in this sense. So the colonists really disliked Andros and King James II. Now, back in England, um, James II was also not very well liked either. And so in 1689, Parliament actually overthrew James II from um, his throne. And a new monarch was put into the crown, and this was a joint monarchy by William and Mary of Orange. Um, and this was known as the Glorious Revolution, because they took over without a war or any kind of bloodshed. When William and Mary came into the throne, there was also the creation of Parliament of the English Bill of Rights. And this English Bill of Rights would be very important because this document was going to limit the power of the monarch and actually confirmed or affirmed the power of the Parliament. The power of the Parliament was then seen to be... Um, absolute or author more authoritative than the power of the monarch. We had a limited power to the monarchy, which had not been seen before in other places. And for the colonists, what did this mean? The colonies then saw this as a way for them to be able to create their own assemblies and charters again. Right Before they had been restricted with James II, now they have a new king and queen who are now restricted by the English Bill of Rights. They see themselves as Englishmen as well under this Bill of Rights. So they find it, it is within their right to be able to hold their town meetings and have their local courts once again. And the fact is that the colonies had always been ruled over by something known as salutary neglect, right? Salutary, which meaning good or healthy. So it was a healthy neglect, meaning that the colonies were pretty much always left on their own. Um, England still managed and made laws regarding trade and managed the colonies, but it was always a very hands-off approach, right? A lot of the British officials did not really enforce a lot of those navigation acts or a lot of other laws, and the colonies were usually pretty much left on their own to rule themselves. 
and the colonists still considered themselves to be full English citizens with all of the rights of English citizens, but they also considered themselves to be able to govern themselves locally, and their colonial courts controlled local affairs and handled anything that happened within the colonies, and it protected their own individual freedoms. So this was the kind of culture that developed here in the American colonies, where yes, the colonists considered themselves English citizens, but they also considered themselves to be a self-governing nation in a sense because there was always this kind of hands-off approach by England. And it's important to kind of remember this from the point of view of the colonists as we start to move forward um, and start to kind of look at the causes and the background to what leads to the revolution. 